welcome to a new episode of Freedom at the Crossroads where I help women everywhere look better, feel better without the pressure. This is our sacred space. It's all about women. It's all about self-care and it's all about personal empowerment, reclaiming your power, the total you, the power of the total you. Oh my goodness. This is the time this is the season for you as a woman to rise up reclaim your power reclaim who you are reclaim your health reclaim your fitness reclaim your sacred space and that's what it's all about here at freedom at the crossroads um i've talked about it a number of times in my podcast why it's so important why i'm so passionate about it too many of us are dying still. This is 2019. It's a brand new year. We're actually more than halfway through the new year. And though we've made a lot of improvements in terms of um, health outcomes for women, um, particularly around um, chronic disease, chronic illness, it goes without fail every couple of weeks you hear the story of a woman who you know essentially worked herself to death um you know or she constantly went to a doctor seeking treatment and they didn't take her seriously and you know either she gave up or the woman ended up going to you know really take up you know the reins of um being her own advocate and then just saying, you know, to hell with the doctors she had and just full throttle doing their own research and really, really asking hard questions and really, really pushing, pushing, pushing to be heard about their health situation. Because in a lot of these instances, still, women's symptoms are discounted as being, oh, your high maintenance or oh it's just one of those things yes women are still being told that oh that's just you know you know a woman thing or you know well at your age and you know just all kinds of ridiculous things instead of taking somebody seriously about the symptoms that they're experiencing and really digging deep to get at the root cause of illness and what is you know plaguing you know these female patients and you know not to get on a huge soap opera uh, make a huge soap opera about you know some of the horror stories that women have experienced in the healthcare arena it just drives home the fact that there's a lot that needs to be done and all of this is connected to women's self-care, how women are perceived in society, the conditioning that women have undergone, you know, and in a lot of these instances, you know, when you're constantly, as a woman, when you're constantly told, oh, this is not really important, or it's all in your head, or, you know, it's really not that, or, you know, just do what I say, or whatever, you begin to take on and, you know, make a, what I call a quiet agreement to be silenced. And this is largely what my movement and what my passion is about when I say become an undomesticated woman. An undomesticated woman is awakened to the fact that conditioning is a real thing. Um, oppression is a real thing. Misogyny is a real thing. Inequality is a real thing and it's being experienced by women all over the world um, women of color are particularly hit hard because they have that additional layer of inequity being laid onto a system that is already unequal I can't believe still I can't believe and I can believe in 2019 women are still fighting for the rights over their own bodies here in the u.s this is going to be a huge issue with the coming election of 2020 um but it's been an issue for so long women have been conditioned 
women have been domesticated to be silent um, to earn their way at the table and when you have been pushed 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 conditioned 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 you don't speak up you don't self-advocate especially in the arena of healthcare. yes we have um, a huge strides in women breaking into the medical field as physicians and things of that nature but traditionally women throughout the decades throughout the years historically have been conditioned um, to submit to patriarchal um, systems and misogynistic systems in society and you know as any other human being who is adaptable we have as women adapted in order to survive in you know a lot of these um, environments that are not particularly nurturing in terms of um, empowerment for women and it's not particularly nurturing of equality in society in general and it's such a huge impact you get when you break through conditioning reclaim your power that's why I talk about OPE other people's expectations that's why I talk about that hamster wheel mm, 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 going nowhere because in my mind the hamster wheel is symbolic of a system where you're trapped and you just like a drone you just mm, keep going you're not self-aware you don't take stock of anything you are not connected to what is going on you just go 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 silent and accept this is why women one of the re a, a large a lot of reasons why women put their health at the bottom of the list while women allow themselves to be silenced why women are constantly comparing themselves to other women rather than saying hey I too am an autonomous human being I deserve basic human dignity I am claiming what is mine my power I am rising up and so that is the whole movement that is the whole understanding behind undomesticated woman and um, on my podcast I was talking about moving from the journey of the undomesticated woman to the huntress arising and that huntress arising is symbolic of oh you are awake you've taken like neo in the matrix you've taken that red pill you've reclaimed your power you know who you are as an individual and you don't have to earn yourself at some earn your place at some imaginary table simply because a, a segment of society that wants to maintain power and dominance over another segment of society says so and so you know when people ask me okay so what's the big how does that relate to self-care well let me tell you self-care is oh my goodness sometimes I get like my hair stand up on my arms when I start talking about self-care because I know that is eh, eh, power it is power because self-care in and of itself is one of those special powerful elements of being of um, your space that has the unique qualities of being something that is a mental thing but it has so much physicality where you can literally <clears throat> break through break systems tear down things because self-care was built on the movements of the anti-war movement back in the day back in the 60s and 70s is built on the civil rights movement which was a passionate movement for equality and freedom and human dignity and equality and 
the women's movement at that time. That's what gave birth to things like Roe v. Wade. That's what it um, had, you know, certain things added to the Constitution here in the U.S. to empower women, to correct some of the inequalities in society, particularly our part of society, our gender in society, and not just women, but this is something this is an entity self-care is life self-care is personhood is ownership it's power the beauty and the scope of power that it carries in it has to do with you as an individual there's no greater force than self-care that is able to really break down um, systems of um, inequity because it's it's a movement in and of itself. self-care itself in it is a movement in and of itself and when you whatever that your mode of self-care is you know every one should have something that is uniquely tailored to them that speaks to them at a primal spiritual mental and physical level let me give you an example me for instance as a kid i grew up watching bruce lee movies martial arts movies i was something of a tomboy as a girl and i got really it was something that was really resonated with me when I saw the journey of these martial arts um, movie, the, you know, the, the protagonist in the martial arts movies, the, a lot of them had, um, you know, some kind of journey or tragedy or something. And for some reason that used to really capture and resonate with me. And so I found myself taking martial arts classes when I was a preteen, even up through um, high school, because I so loved martial arts. And even into college, I took um, karate. I started off in taekwondo um, when I was in junior high, and then I gravitated towards karate. Uh, and then I, a little bit of um, apkido, but that really wasn't my thing i was more i'm more of a taekwondo karate kind of girl karate kid whatever but you get my drift and for me there is something about that movement that strengthening of the body that mind body connection through action that elevated me internally and gave me a real sense of um, connection on all levels and awareness of space what was mine and what I had the capability of doing and self-care reinforces those elements self-care renews you on a mind body spiritual plane of existence and it ministers to you in all those areas and the more you connect with that the more you connect with self the more you connect with who you are in a particular space and the more you recognize your internal and external boundaries the stronger you are as an individual the stronger you are on all levels and so what you do on the self-care plane of existence it has a ripple effect in all areas of your life and that's the power of um, self-care and that's why I always talk about it and I always speak about it in the in, in terms of it being the powerhouse the staff of power that women can use to rise up and reclaim who they are and their personhood and so when you embark on that kind of journey you begin to recognize the importance of boundaries you begin to recognize what you what places you occupy in space oh my gosh i get to go on and on and on and on but you see where i'm coming from when i talk about self-care and that's why i talk about is uh, that's why i say it's so important for women to really really hone in on who they are so 
first step and that's why I tell my friends I tell my clients I say it I tell everyone that I speak to who has this issue with women who have these issues the self-care is a real issue where you don't value yourself or you feel guilty about having needs to begin with I mean women have been conditioned to feel guilt over something as basic and necessary as self-care caring for self caring for self is not just taking a bath it's not just eating it's not just sleeping self-care is ministering to yourself how can you give from a place of emptiness how can you do any activity speak to anyone out there who's got multi-million dollars millions of dollars and ask them <laughs> what's more important health or money nine times out of ten they will say health and when they say health they're not talking about just your physical health they're talking about health on all levels and that is self-care because if you are giving from a place of emptiness guess what you can't sustain that if you're sick if you're unhealthy if in mind body and spirit how do you expect to achieve those things that you were called to do those things that you want to do those things you're passionate about doing how do you expect to give anything to this world to be a contribution in this world if you're if you feel like your gift is ministering to other people if that lights you up and sets you on fire you can't do that if you're all the way the bottom of some list you can't do anything you are basically trapped in your own body because you can't do nothing you can't give nothing and eventually you become nothing you wither and you die um, I remember my mom used to say that the a cemetery has some of the greatest treasures the world has ever not known <laughs> because people have died without expressing any of their gifts particularly women we're talking about women here and men but in general people who have put themselves on the list have expended and given from place of emptiness sacrificing themselves on the altar of OPE other people's expectations that's why I talk about that all the time OPE other people's expectations that stupidity and I call it stupidity because if you only realized how disempowering that whole mindset, how self-defeating that mindset of OPE, you would run in the other direction because that is bondage. And it's just mind-boggling how women continue to buy into this compare yourself to other women sacrificing yourself hoping that somebody will invite you to the table of what humanity dignity being able to speak none of those things OPE is not the rent you pay to speak at to be able to speak at the table to be able to express your humanity with dignity and when you are unawakened when you are stuck and trapped on that hamster wheel mm, 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 going nowhere you can't see any of that you have none of that awareness you're just stuck in a rut and you wonder where that sense of darkness, that sense of being trapped, of uh, the whole superwoman complex, I hate that because that's a trap. Outside of the DC Comics superwoman, totally love the movie. Totally different from the whole superwoman complex. That's another rant. But those are all traps that keep you shackled and bound and domesticated. 
You see what I mean by domesticated now? And do you see why I say become an undomesticated woman? As you're breaking those cycles, you're breaking dependence on other people's expectations. You no longer lay on that altar of OPE, other people's expectations. You no longer say, ah, let me work myself. Let me work myself into exhaustion. Maybe they will recognize my worthiness and then I can speak and then I can sleep and then I can eat and then I can self-care. How ridiculous. This is Tonya, my girls, from Freedom at the Crossroads, helping women everywhere break free from the shackles of OPE, look better, feel better, without the pressure of what? OPE. Next time, girls. Bye.